addiction And don't you know that something's gonna change I've been infected by God's injection Now I don't say the things I used to say Cause now I'm changed I'm not the same And now I'm moving in God's direction And I feel good about that It makes me wanna jump up, spin around been looking from a new perspective my eyes are open now what can i say and now i'm walking with a new objective but ever since the day that jesus saved me because now i'm changed i'm not the same and now i'm moving in god's direction and i feel good about that it makes me want to jump up spin around Not just lay around and waste away And Lord, I'm glad that you were resurrected And I'm still laying down there in that grave, no And now I'm changed I'm not the same, no And now I'm moving in your direction And I feel good about that It makes me want to jump up, spin around, get up, get down Don't you know I do it night and day Jump up, spin around another trip in our very last imagination time machine. I'm so excited you guys are here today because the imagination time machine is so much fun. We get to travel not only anywhere, but any when, which is so cool. Who thought, who would have thought we could travel to a different time? Well, we can right here as we join the story and travel to see the promised land. So far, we have visited Rahab and the spies that she hid. And then we traveled to see Joshua as he and the Israelite army uh, asked God to make the sun stand still. That's crazy, right? Can you imagine the sun standing still in the sky? And then finally last week, we got to go and see the beautiful temple that Solomon built for God. And today, we're going to take one last trip to the promised land. I'm so excited about it. But first, did you notice something? My t-shirt? Is it cool? Do you like it? Guys, I tie-dyed it myself. It was my first tie-dyeing experience. I tie-dyed it last week with my friend Sarah. And guess what? I'm giving this t-shirt away. Does anybody want this t-shirt? Anybody? Oh, yeah. I, 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 I want to oh, get it. Oh, 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 please, please, please. Please, please, please. Oh, oh, please. Oh, 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 really okay. want guys, it. Guys, here's the please, thing. I would love guys, it. I can't give it to both of you. I wear it Wait, maybe I can give it to both of you. Oh, yes, perfect. Here, um, Kristen, Heidi, I'm gonna uh, give you a piece. Um, what, what are you doing? Oh my goodness. Well, here, um, this is, oh, you know what? You're gonna get a big piece. <gasps> and then Sarah, oh, 
Like no, this. don't worry, don't worry. This way everybody gets some. Um, yours is a little bit smaller, but oh, like the colors, I really like those colors and I think you'll love them too. Okay, kids, disclaimer, don't no, try this at no, home. It's gonna no, make your parents really, really mad. But even. guys, look, now everybody is so happy. Wait, actually, no, nobody's no. happy because nobody wins. Guys, there's some things like a t-shirt that are just better when they're in one piece. Like Heidi can't wear this. Sarah probably no. can't wear this. Mm -mm. And you know what? I mean, I could wear this, but it really only covers my back and uh, parts of my shoulders. So guys, when there's some things that are just better when they're whole. And t-shirts are like that. When something gets torn into pieces, nobody wins. And that's exactly what the Israelites learned in our story today. But the thing that got ripped into pieces for that story was so much more precious than just a t-shirt. So, are you ready for our last trip in the imagination time machine? I hope you are. I'm going to get my imagination hat on. And we are going to be in the book of 1 Kings, chapter 11, if you want to follow along today. Max is going to be our guide once again as we head back to the city of Jerusalem. Remember, I want you to follow his directions really closely because he knows how the imagination time machine works. So when he says, imagine, I want you to imagine exactly what Max is describing in your mind. Today, we are going to return to King Solomon, who we met last week. But this time, there's a big problem as something gets, well, torn in two. Actually, torn in 12. Oh, can you imagine if I had torn this into 12 pieces? But... Like I said, the thing that gets torn up, it's way more important than just a t-shirt. Our big idea today says that sin tears God's people apart. So we should confess and turn away from our sins. So I want you to keep that big idea locked in your brains as we journey back to our Bible story. Are you ready? Okay, we're going to be very quiet. And when Max says, we are going to close our eyes and get ready to time travel. Here we go! Hello, everybody. My name is Max. I'll be your guide in the ITM. That stands for Imagination Time Machine. There are some rules you need to follow for a safe trip in the ITM. First, close your eyes when I tell you to, and don't open them until I tell you to. The ITM projects in the darkness. If you open your eyes, its projection system shuts down. Second, follow my imagination instructions closely so you don't get lost. I'm setting the imagination destination right now. Location, outside the walls of Jerusalem. Time, 930 BC. All righty then. This would be a good time to close your eyes and imagine you're rocketing through time and space. Brace yourself. We're coming in for a landing. Imagine the doors of the ITM open as you step out. Imagine you're standing outside of the walls of Jerusalem, the capital city of the Promised Land. It's a sunny day, but clouds are building on the horizon. What does this ancient city look like to you? What sort of sounds do you hear coming from Jerusalem? Can you feel the warm summer breeze blowing on your skin? Now imagine a man named Jeroboam walks out of the city gate. Jeroboam is one of King Solomon's officials, but he's not happy with the king. He's headed somewhere in a hurry, but then a man stops him. Quick, they're standing near a tree. Sneak behind it and listen to what they're saying. Jeroboam, my name is Ahijah. I am a prophet from God. He has a message for you. Imagine that the prophet takes off his coat and begins tearing it into 12 pieces. Can you see it? Imagine the sound of the tearing fabric. Now imagine that Ahijah the prophet hands Jeroboam 10 of the 12 pieces. King Solomon was wise in his youth, but now he worships false gods and he encourages others to do the same. 
God has called him to turn away from his sin, but he refuses. So here is what God will do. These twelve pieces of fabric are like the twelve tribes of Israel. God is going to tear the ten northern tribes away from Solomon's family and give them to you. When King Solomon hears about the prophecy, he flies into a rage. Imagine Jeroboam fleeing for his life toward the country of Egypt. He knows that if King Solomon ever catches him, he'll be dead meat. A short time later though, King Solomon dies of old age. His son, Rehoboam, becomes the new king over the twelve tribes of Israel. Thinking that it's safe now, Jeroboam returns from Egypt to rejoin his family. Imagine the new king standing among the people of the ten northern tribes as Jeroboam and the other tribal leaders approach him. Imagine Jeroboam kneeling before King Rehoboam out of respect. Shh, listen carefully. Jeroboam is saying something. Your father, King Solomon, made us work hard. Too hard. If you treat us more kindly, the ten northern tribes will serve you. You think my father worked you hard? I'll work you even harder. You think my father beat you with whips? I'll beat you with bigger whips. But the king's threats don't have their intended effect. The people of the ten northern tribes can't believe their ears. Imagine as their faces turn angry. Imagine the sound as the crowd begins to murmur and shout their displeasure at the new king. Suddenly, the anger boils over and people begin throwing stones at one of the king's henchmen. Imagine the sight and sound of rocks whizzing by. Imagine being in the crowd as it now rushes toward the king. King Rehoboam realizes that his cruelty has pushed the people too far and that his life is in danger. Picture the king running for his life as the angry crowd chases him. Can you hear the chaos? Imagine the king jumping into his chariot and racing away just before the crowd can get their hands on him and tear him apart. As the dust settles and calm returns, the ten northern tribes choose Jeroboam as their new king. They call themselves Israel. Meanwhile, the two southern tribes remain loyal to King Rehoboam. They call themselves Judah. Ahijah's prophecy has come true. Just like the coat, God has torn a once great nation into pieces, and all because of Solomon's sin. Well, I think that does it. We best be getting back to the ITM. Imagine yourself stepping into the ITM one last time. Be sure to strap yourselves in. Destination, present day. We'll be arriving home in three, two, one. You can open your eyes now. All right, guys, we made it back. Wow, that was a crazy, awesome Bible story. Let's just discuss a few questions quick so that we can talk about our trip for a minute. So, the prophet Ahijah, do you remember what he did with his coat? Yeah, he tore it up. He tore it into 12 pieces, and he gave 10 to Jeroboam. And then, why did he do that, guys? That's a pretty crazy thing. Well, he did that because Solomon worshiped false gods and he refused to turn away from his sin. Not good. And then what happened to the 12 tribes at the end of the story? Do you remember? Yeah, so the 10 northern tribes chose Jeroboam to be their new king and they called themselves Israel. But the two southern tribes remained loyal to King Rehoboam and they called themselves Judah. So in today's story, we saw two different people who sinned. We saw how King Solomon sinned, 
by worshiping other gods and encouraging other people to do the same, and we know that's not right. And then his son, King Rehoboam, sinned by being unkind to people. I mean, did you hear how he was yelling at those people and the awful things that he was saying? Well, Solomon and Rehoboam's sin didn't just affect them, as we saw. It affected everyone around them. In fact, their sin tore the nation of Israel in two. That's the thing about sin, guys. Most of the time, it doesn't just affect us or whoever happens to be sinning. It also affects all of the people around them. It hurts other people. One of the greatest gifts God ever gave us was community, the people around us, a group of believers who is with us and loves us and helps us to follow Jesus. But like we saw in today's story, sin can also destroy that community and tear friendships apart. Let me show you what I'm talking about. So here we have a Jenga tower. You've probably played Jenga before. In Jenga, you take turns pulling out little blocks until finally the tower gets so weak that it can't stand up anymore and it falls down. But today we're gonna pretend that this tower is our community and our friendships. And each of these little blocks is like one of us. So as you can see, when we stick together and we live God's way, this tower is pretty stable. We're strong and can stand up like this tower. But look what happens when sin creeps in. So imagine somebody is uh, in this, you know, they decide to tell a teeny tiny little lie. Not a big one, but something that's untrue. And they tell a lie about somebody close to them. Well, that breaks our trust and that tears that apart. But what if, what if, what if some of us maybe just, we make some bad choices? There goes another, another brick, and suddenly it's not so steady anymore. What if you take something that didn't belong to you, or maybe you disobey your leader? Suddenly that tower can't stand up anymore. The community is broken. And as you can see, each time someone sinned, each time they lied or stole or were unkind, the community got weaker and weaker until it had to fall down. It just couldn't stand anymore. That's what sin does, guys. It destroys our community and breaks down our friendships. See, a community of friends is kind of like this t-shirt. It's no good when it's torn into pieces. Friendships are only good when you're not fighting with that friend or that friendship is still intact. Guys, there's a few things that we can do to keep sin from tearing our community into pieces like this t-shirt. Firstly, we can say no to sin. When you are tempted to do something that you know could tear apart a community, just don't do it. That's the easiest way to keep sin from destroying a group of friends is to just not sin and to stay away from it. But we all mess up sometimes. That happens. And if it does happen, you can also confess your sin and turn away from it. That means that what, whatever you did wrong, you tell the person that you sinned against, that you did wrong, and you ask for forgiveness. It means that you turn away from your sin and you say, I'm not going to do that anymore, and you just don't do it again. We want our community of friends to stay strong and connected. And our Bible memory verse today shows us a few ways that we can do that. <clears throat> it says, be kind and compassionate to one another, forgiving each other, just as Christ God forgave, as in Christ God forgave you. So it goes like this says, be kind and compassionate to one another, forgiving each other, just as in Christ, God forgave you. Ephesians 4, verse 32. Great job. So in our Bible story today, if King Solomon and King Rehoboam had said no to sin, or if they had just confessed their sin and turned away from it, Israel wouldn't have been torn in two, like my t-shirt. They made a terrible mistake, and it had terrible consequences. But we don't have to make that same mistake. Let's review our big idea for this week. It says, sin tears God's people apart. So we should turn or confess our sins and turn away from it. Can you say that to someone near you? Sin tears God's people apart. So we should confess and turn away from our sins. Great job. Let's pray and ask God to help us protect our community by saying no to sin, by turning away from it, and by being kind and compassionate to one another, okay? So God, I just pray over um, our friends today that 
God, when, when we're faced with the idea of sin, we can just say no to it. But if we do end up sinning, I just pray that you would help us to be able to confess that sin and to turn away and not do it anymore. Because God, we love you and we don't want to tear our community in two like we saw in our Bible story today. We don't want that to happen to us. So I just pray that you would give us strength to say no to sin and to confess and turn away from it when it does happen. We love you, Lord, and we thank you for this story today. Amen. So guys, I am going to add our big Bible story image to our timeline here at the church. And it's going to remind us that we took a trip to Jerusalem and we saw how Solomon and Rehoboam's sin tore the kingdom in two. But we don't have to make that same mistake and we can keep our community strong and connected by showing kindness and compassionate, compassion to others. Guys, that was our last trip in the Imagination Time Machine. I am so glad that you were with us for this. I had such a good time traveling back to the Bible times with all of you. And I hope that you had fun too. But I hope that you and your family will take some time today to discuss our big Bible story questions. Like, what was the saddest part of the story to imagine? Because it was kind of a tough story. What was the hardest part for you to imagine? And how did you imagine it? And what was, uh, or why was the nation torn in two? And I have a fun connection activity for you guys to do with your family so that you can remember this story. So grab some post-it notes, or if you don't have post-it notes, just pieces of paper that you t put tape on will work. Um, and write some things on them um, that are nice things that you can do for someone, like open the door for someone, give your grandma and grandpa a call. Ooh, this is a good one. Tell somebody you know, you know that Jesus loves them. And you're going to take those post-its once you've written nice things that you can do, on, and you're going to stick them to the wall like a tower. Because remember, our Jenga tower fell over. But this is going to remind you of that tower and how when we do kind things for other people, that keeps the tower of community strong and keeps us from falling or pushing the tower over with our sin. So guys, that's just one fun thing you can do to remember our story. Thanks so much for joining us on our final trip in the Imagination Time Machine. Next month, we are going to meet some fabulous Bible characters five of them to be exact, and we're going to see what exciting things we can learn from their stories. I'll see you next time.